The second part of 8.2 is being able to multiply and divide rational expressions. You really need to know two things to be able to multiply and divide them. Number one is how do you actually multiply and divide fractions, and number two is how do you simplify rational expressions. Being able to multiply and divide fractions is if you have a, a fraction like 3 over 4 multiplied with 16 over 21, and you're trying to go through and multiply this out, you may sit there and say, all right, let's do the 3 times the 16 and get 48 over 4 times 21 and get 84. But then the problem that you have is you have this big fraction that you've got to be able to reduce. When you multiply fractions, the easy way to be able to go through and actually multiply them is to simplify them before you actually do the multiplication. Basically what you're looking for is do we see any common factors between something in the numerator, something in the denominator. And if you do, you can just reduce them before you actually do the multiplication. So 3 and 21 have a 3 in common. We can reduce the 3 down to a 1, the 21 to a 7, the 4 and the 16 we can reduce to a 1 and 4. And then when you actually multiply these, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 7 is 7, and you get a reduced fraction with how, without having to try to deal with the 48 over 84. We can do that same exact thing with rational expressions, is you can go through and simplify them down by finding something in the numerator and denominator that will cancel each other out, cancel them, and then multiply everything that's left over. So if we take a look at this first example, it's in multiplication already. We want to say, can we find something in the numerator and denominator that we can cancel out or, or at least reduce? We see that there's a 2 and an 8, so we can reduce the 2 and the 8 down to a 1 and a 4. We also have a 3 and a 15 that we can reduce the 3 down to a 1, the 15 down to a 5, and that's going to simplify the numbers for us. We can take, also take a look at the variables and say, do we see any variables that we can reduce? Which I see an x squared and an x squared, so those two are just going to cancel each other out. We have an x to the fourth over x to the third, which is basically just saying you have four x's being multiplied up here with three x's being multiplied down here. So if you get rid of these three x's, you're going to get rid of three of these four, which means that you're just going to be left with one. So what we may want to do is there's a lot of scribbles going on is let's take a look at what we have left. We have a one that we don't have to really worry about in x, y to the fifth. And then down here, we really just have a one. Up here, we're just left with a five. And down here we have a 4y to the second. A little bit easier to take a look at without all the scribbles there. And now we see there's some y's in the numerator denominator. We basically have two y's being multiplied down here with five y's being multiplied up top. We can get rid of two of them, which means if we get rid of two of the five that we have here, we now have three left over. And really that's all that you can go through and simplify and just now we can multiply it. The numerator, we have a 5 with an x with a y cubed over the denominator or 1 times a 4 which is just a 4 and if we caught everything up here there's nothing else that we actually need to go through and simplify down that's our final answer it says assume all expressions are defined that means we don't have to worry about figuring out where the denominators would be equal to 0 where we'd be trying to divide by 0 alright if we take a look at B we want to do the same exact thing now since we have binomials here we're going to have to go through and do some factoring this x plus 2 can't be factored, so we can just leave it as x plus 2. The 3x plus 12, we can take something out of the 3x plus 12. We can take out a 3. So this is going to be 3 multiplied with x plus 4. And then same thing for the second one. x plus 4 can't be factored, so we're going to leave it as x plus 4. x squared minus 4. This one can be factored. This is a special type of binomial that we deal with. This is called a difference of squares x squared minus 4 is if you take a look at this first term here the x squared that's the same thing as just being able to say the quantity x squared and then 4 can just be that same exact thing the quantity of 2 squared and we're subtracting it that's what we call a difference of squares is it's a difference meaning that we have a subtraction there and then it's going to be of squares which just means that we have a perfect square in the first spot, we have a perfect square in the second spot. The way that we then factor this is we just take those two perfect squares and we're going to put them in our parentheses, x and 2, x and 2, and then we go plus and minus. That's how we factor any kind of problem that is a difference of squares. So this really just becomes x plus 2 multiplied with x minus 2. And now it's just a matter of saying can anything reduce? Well, here's an x plus 2 up top, x plus 2 on the bottom, and we have x plus 4 is on the top and bottom of our fractions. So that all simplifies out. Now, 
it's just multiply across. Nothing here with nothing in the other numerator, so we just have a 1 as a placeholder. In the denominator, we have a 3 with an x minus 2, so 3 multiplied with x minus 2. You can leave your answer as this, or if you want to, you can go through and you can multiply that out and make it 3x minus 6. Either one of those answers it is, is acceptable. That's being able to multiply rational expressions. Being able to divide them, really all that you have to know is that to divide a fraction, you're just going to multiply by its reciprocal. That means that if you're dividing by 3 over 4, what you want to do is change that 3 over 4, take the reciprocal of it, which just means flip it, so it becomes 4 over 3, and you're going to change that division sign to a multiplication sign. And then, as you can see, they reduced the 2 and the 4, went through and multiplied it. So division is just going to be one more step from multiplication. So let's take a look at B. If we go through and take a look and try to factor this, the first thing we see in the first numerator is it's x to the fifth minus 4x to the third. They both have x's in them, so we can actually take out those x's, and it becomes x to the third, which if we take out three of the five x's here, we're going to be left with an x squared minus 4, which this, this here, we may look at this and say we have it factored, but this x squared minus 4 here is it another one of those differences squared difference of squares. So it's going to be x squared minus 2 squared, which we can actually rewrite that then to just be x to the third multiplied with x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then we can take a look at the bottom, the denominator of this first one. It's x squared minus x minus 2, which this is another quadratic trinomial, so we can make our two sets of parentheses, throw in our x's, if we take a look at the bottom sign, the last sign there, it's a negative, which means our signs should be different. Two numbers that multiply to give us two that are going to add to get us that negative one. Well, it's got to be a two and a one. And since it's a negative one that we're trying to get, that means the bigger number should be negative. So there's the two and the one. That's all that can be factored there. So it's just going to be x plus one and x minus two. We take a look at this one. Now, first thing we should see is that we have a divided by sign. So we're going to go through, flip, change it to multiplication, and at the same time as we change that to multiplication, we've got to flip this second fraction. So x squared minus 1 and x to the fifth minus x to the fourth minus 2x to the third. x squared minus 1. This is another difference of squares because we have an x squared and we have a 1 squared with a minus sign between it. So we can automatically go through then, create the two sets of parentheses. We can throw in the x and the 1 x and the 1, and it's got to be a plus and a minus. If we take a look at the bottom, we have the same thing going on as what we kind of had over here, where they all have x's, so we can take out the amount of x's that they all have, at least the, the minimum number that they all have, which would be 3, and then it's going to leave us with x squared minus x minus 2, which now we need to factor this, which technically we just factored it up here into x plus 1, x minus 2, so we have x plus 1, times x minus 2 in the bottom. Now we're just playing, I'll leave the x cubed there as well. Now it's just playing a matching game to see what can cancel out numerator denominator. x cubes, so we can cancel out the x cubes. We have an x minus 2, x minus 2 here, so those will cancel out. x plus 2, nothing's really going to cancel out with that in the denominator. We have an x plus 1 here that can cancel out with the x plus 1 there and that looks like everything that can cancel out. So it's just a matter of being able to put those together now. In the numerator, we have x plus 2 with x minus 1. In the denominator, we have x plus 1 with x minus 2. And that is going to be our final answer. If we want to multiply that out, you can multiply this out. That would get you x squared plus x minus 2 over x squared minus x minus 2. And again, you can't cancel out the x squared because that's the only part of the trinomial. That's not the entire trinomial. So you can't just cancel out part of that polynomial. All right, for A, I'd like you guys to take a look, uh, pause this, and go ahead and give A a shot, see how you do. What you should get as an answer for A is x, y to the fourth over 4. If we want to take a look at how we get that answer, is we see that we're dividing, so we can go ahead and just flip that second fraction around to make it multiplication, so 9y to the fifth over 16, and we just go through and start canceling things out. The, the two nines can cancel each other out, so they're gone. 
the 4 and the 16 can become a 1 and a 4, because 4 goes into both of them. The x cubed and the x squared, 3x is up here, 2 of them down here, so we can get rid of 2 of them, which means that we can get rid of 2 of the 3, just leaving us with 1 of them. And then we have y's here. We have a y to the 5th and just a single y, so we can get rid of 1y, get rid of this, and we're left with 1y there. Which, if we see what we have all left over, 1x, y to the 4th, so that's in our numerator, x, y to the 4th, and in the bottom, all of the stuff in this fraction went away, and we're just left with a 4 in the other denominator, and that's where a 4 comes from.